and welcome back to another episode of Total Control with SD Wesker. So today I figured we'd start off with a little bit of analysis, uh, kind of the fun parts of these saves, because I was just having a little gander at Javi Galan and Alex Gaia. We did this earlier this season and we came to the conclusion that basically Galan needed to play. But I've been looking at the two of them and I actually wonder if Alex Gaia might be the guy for the final three matches of the season. We're also going to compare Chong and Huampi to see how they've actually compared in their game time. So when you look, firstly, like they're both highlighted here and they're together. So we're not going to try and sort them. We're just going to have a look at them, basically, because otherwise the other players get in the way. And I can't be asked to do all the filters that I normally do uh, with that. So you can see that, in fact, Javi Galan uh, gets a goal every 0.09... Uh, Every, yeah, per 90 minutes, he gets a goal basically every 10 matches. And Gaia is slightly worse than that one. So fair enough. In terms of goal scoring, Galan is better. Undeniably better. But look at the assists. 0.09 on assists as well, whereas having um, Alex Gaia, 0.36. So basically an assist every three games. He's got six assists this season, all of which have come in the league as well. That suggests to me that he has got a much better grasp of creating chances i don't know why but for whatever reason i feel like he's going to create even better opportunities for us as simple as that and when you look at this chance created per 90 minutes again 0.54 to 0.36 that is a huge um discrepancy also 12 percent cross completion compared to 10 that's a you know only a 20 percent increase but it's still an increase you know uh, when it comes to pass completion 77 to 75 again it's only slightly more but it is still noticeable he completes slightly less passes per 90 minutes though but again key passes per 90 minutes 1.51 compared to 1.13 again that's nearly 50 percent more uh, that is a massive jump up uh, in terms of key passes which is what we want you know that position is quite important for key passes over the top as well so again, he does shoot on target a bit less, which is fair to notice. And he does have less shots uh, overall on target per 90 minutes, but he also dribbles a little bit more as well. So I genuinely think Alex Gaia might be the man going forward. And maybe we should have had a look at this before because I think the fans have complained a little bit about Javi Galan's performances. And I think I'd let that slip under the radar a little bit. Now, just have a little look at um, Huampi and Chong. So I've sorted it by goals because it's the only way we can get them both together. So you can see... Goals per 90 minutes, Huampi 0.19, Chong 0.16. Not too bad, still slightly worse, but yeah, the assist is where it really stands out. 0.08 to 0.42, that is a huge step up, and Huampi's creativity is so, so important. I think having Huampi and Gaiar in the team, they're responsible for 17 assists this season, whereas Chong and Galan are responsible for three assists between them this season. And that, that is a huge difference. And in terms of chance creation, again, Huampi slightly better. In terms of cross completion, it is a massive increase. It's more than double, more than 100% increase. Uh, pass completion is roughly the same. He completes a lot more passes than Chong as well. He plays more key passes. He hits the target a little bit less, uh, which is actually a, a noteworthy addition. And Chong does love a bit more of a dribble. But Huampi's also had three man of the match awards. He's just a much, much better player. So having, I think, a Huampi Gaiar front line with Juan Hernandez, we could be in for something today in the two, uh, well, not the two games, the one game. I'm hoping to record two episodes today, that's what I mean. So, yeah. Um, it's We're in the crunch time now. We've got three games to go this season. I still think we can stay up. We're in a good position to do it, but it does rely on other stuff going our way too. First things first, press conference. Like, against Real Madrid, ah, shit happens. It's one of those things, isn't it, really? Um... I would like to maybe work, if I was going to do another season, I would work on a more defensive approach perhaps for some of these games to make sure we win the games we need to win and then set up to frustrate these sort of sides if we can, you know? Okay, important stuff now. Training. This week here is so important. So I'm going to move this out as I often do here. Now, what I think I might do for FM19, uh, sorry, for FM20 is I'm actually going to go through and make myself a database um, that that has each of the training options into the different categories like this and is listing all of the different things that it could potentially work on. And that way, I will be able to construct much more better customized training sessions for myself. That's, that's something I'm going to definitely do because, unfortunately, it's really hard to compare these to each other. I wish there was a comparison one because you can look at all this stuff, but it's really hard to see on a macro level what it will affect. So that's something I definitely want to do. And maybe I'll then you know put it up so other people can have a look at it themselves and maybe use it as a tool, perhaps, because I think there's definitely something that can be improved on the training menus is uh, make them a bit more user-friendly. And I intend to try and do that myself. Then again, they might have changed them in FM20. So match prep, teamwork. That's all we're going to have in there. Recovery, teamwork, game, recovery. Honestly, teamwork again, then the game and recovery. Just no massive sessions this week. Just really try to work on keeping the players as fit and fresh as possible. Then we can have a little bit... We won't be doing this, of course, um, as we build up to the last game against Alavesh, which hopefully is going to be a celebration of us staying in the top flight. I'd like to hope that we don't have to rely on a final day win at home against the better side, but... I don't know. I really don't know. It's going to be fun, though. 
post-match analysis, there's not a lot to say. We definitely got better, I think, once we've switched it back to low crosses. I don't know why, we just did. It seems to be that low crosses works for us, but then sometimes we often score when we switch it up a bit from the player's perspective. But when we actually try to force that, it doesn't seem to work. But again, you can see... Key passes. Ibrahim Amadou should not be making the most key passes for us. Torre has been anonymous in the last two matches. And I'm not saying that's entirely his fault. I believe that's down to the other team's presence on us. Now, again, they're playing a very similar... And pa Paddy Roberts, Fulham legend, is in the team. Okay, so there's a Huampi and a Huampe. Oh, the Battle of the Huamps. Apparently, we need one more win to guarantee survival. I'll have a look at this in a sec. And this is, I'm going to turn low crosses back on in the uh, tactics screen, I think. So, fitness tests. Uh, I guess not... Oh, that is... Mm. Match sharpness is good, but his condition is concerning. So all the games kick off at the same time. Main ones to look out for, I guess, Betis. But really, it's the Villarreal Hatafe game. That's super important. Uh, Lagan is not that important. They could get down, could get relegated today, though. I think, officially. So the way things work, if we were to get a win here against Girona, we'd move on to thirty-five points with two matches to go. And that would officially probably mean that Hatafe couldn't catch us unless they were to get a victory. But I still don't understand what they mean about the idea of us being safe. Because as far as I'm concerned, we could still fall... Bef mm, I don't know. It doesn't feel like a win would be enough to keep us safe today. But all right. So first things first, I'm going to put back onto low crosses here. Next thing's next. Oh, that injury risk is so high, but unfortunately we've got no choice in the matter. Torre will have to start because it's super important today. Um, I am... Going to drop out Javi Galan and bring back in Alex Gaia. I feel like it's worth a crack today. Because just to get our best feet forward and what's worked statistically this season. And of course, that means, of course, Mango will be dropping out. Uh, unfortunately, he did not really make the most of his opportunities in the team. Uh, and Juan, admittedly, against big sides, but still. So that front three, hopefully we can give some chances to Hernandez with those, with Juanpi, Gaia and Torre. The amount of chances those three have created this season is insane. Um, and Hernandez just hasn't put them away. But that's fine. <laughs> well, it's not, but it is. It has to be. As for the bench, we're going to go with Galan, Walker Peters, Chong, Woodburn, Costas, Willock, and not Gallego. I'll probably still rather have Mango on the bench over him as it stands. Okay, let's have a look at them. Scout report first. No suspensions. Okay, they're quick starters, so they like an early goal. Got a good goalkeeper and a good defense. All right, we generally do okay against this sort of style. Obviously, against Real Madrid, it was always going to be a difficult approach. Inside forward and a round doiter too. So with a wing back, that makes sense. Robert's cuts inside. We've got to do a similar kind of idea as to what we did against Real Madrid, where we try to funnel them into the infield and that kind of worked against them too they are most vulnerable against our sort of system that's nice to see can see a lot from the right wing from crosses a lot of crosses in fact so in the last 20 matches they've used that system and yeah i mean there's obviously no lower rated teams than them but they have definitely conceded a lot more chances than you think and when they play against the same system they concede a lot of chances as well so that's a positive sign for me they concede a lot of opportunities when they play i think we've got to go out and have a crack here I don't want to go cautious in these games because I think that might just let the pressure come onto us, particularly as they're going to play attacking. It's hard to know. We've basically got a couple of games to save ourselves, and I think we've got to take them take advantage of it, really. They love this right-hand side here with the 24 and the 7, so Poro seems to be a... Bono in goal is going to be playing the ball out to Poro. It's sort of a simple system. It's clearly dominating this right. Look at the number of key passes. My God. But again, often into this right-hand channel. I guess Atletico, they obviously had to go through more through the middle, which makes sense, but they also lost. And against Villarreal, it seems in games where there's more balance, they tend to go down the side of Porro and Stuani. That genuinely seems to be their uh, their approach. Yeah, the one change from the Real Madrid game is the fact that they have their playmaker on a different side. So that's what we're going to do. The exact... Oh, not Bernardo. Apparently they should not hold back when... Mm, all right, then. Going to do the same thing we did against Real Madrid because it worked. This approach of pushing their inside forwards inside... And expecting the overlaps. Now, Munez is obviously going to be overlapping as well. So we might want to close him down too. But it seems to be that this right-hand side is going to be the main area of attack for them. Stuani is the top goalscorer from that right. Assists most from Patrick Roberts and he likes to dribble. That makes sense, I'd say. To type mark these two guys up, basically. Lozano seems to be more of a distraction. That means he'll never be scoring a hat-trick against us. That's the plan today. Oh, dear. Um, This is... If we were to get a win here, it would really take a load of my mind. And I would be prepared to say at that point, even though we wouldn't technically be safe, I don't think, that I would say we were safe if we win at Girona. I feel like if we win any of our final three matches, we're safe. But the form is not great at the moment. And they have just won a game for the first time in a while. On the one hand, I would really like to win this game. So we're just relaxing into the final two games of the season. But then there's another part in the back of my head that's like, yeah, but it would be really entertaining if the last two games of the season, there was even more riding on it. It's not like we've flown away from the relegation zone. We sort of got a bit clear, and now we've been dragged back in. We were up to five points clear at one point, and I think there's a Chinook flying over. Apologies for that. I think we're being invaded. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Now, remember, we beat this lot 4-0 
in the home game. I think we kind of just have to play to win in these games. I don't see us being able to come here and play a cautious approach. We might have to switch to that later in the game, but I just don't think that's the appropriate thing right now. Keeping an eye on those other games, though, is going to be huge. There's so damn much riding on this. The Villarreal Getafe game is super important. Betis Valencia, less so. Betis are basically miles clear these days. Uh, that's not really an issue. It's really... I mean, and maybe the Lagan is one if they pulled off a miracle win, but it's really only the Villarreal Hatafe game. I think if Villarreal win that, Hatafe are going to do a struggle to get up there. Uh, Willow Malero, back for Luisinho. Bit of space for a ball in. Okay, caught out a bit there. Um, bit of an overlap. Oh, God. That's a bit too deep, but we've got to make sure that we mark up the back post. Well, Garcia, well played. Amadou has got better and better as the season's worn on, I feel like. Hernandez, go on, use him. There's Alex Gaia. Oh, he's done really well. That was a really nice piece of counter-attacking play there. Amadou's winning tackles for days. He's just grown into the role in the team so much. Juampi, back post. Echeta, cleared away. Porro, has got into a bit of good... Sp oh, imagine if that had gone in as well. Imagine if that had gone in as well. Okay, Luisini with the long throw. Bit of a melee in there, and it's just headed wide by Hernandez. Honestly, I would totally settle for just not losing this. Uh, a draw would be a pretty all right result for my money. And Hernandez! Oh, what a chance. I think there was a block in there. And the chance was there. Hernandez again couldn't take it. Stuani. Overlap is available. And again, they're just losing Poro. I'm actually going to have um, Gaillard follow Poro back a bit rather than like pressing him. We're actually going to have him mark him, so to speak. And Getafe are winning away from home. That is a massive result if they were to get it. That's uh, very, very bad for us as well because that really does start to bunch the bottom of the league up quite considerably with that Getafe goal. We'll put a load of teams on 30 points. And Laganes are winning. Away from home, amazingly. That would be a huge point for them. It would actually, I think it might even keep them in the race still. A Carpo. It's going to be another corner. Um, things are getting very, very interesting down towards the bottom of the league right about now. Oh, Toure. Oh, that is a sensational move. What a chance that was. Sociedad of equalised against Laganes immediately, but what a moment that was. We really should have scored there too. Echeta and tipped over the crossbar. Mm, we've had two really good chances in today's game and we should have taken one of them, but as usual, we haven't. And his sewers had a flicked away. But it's definitely, it bodes well so far, the fact that we're creating these opportunities. But my God, are we going to regret not taking one, I feel like. And Laganes back in front again. 3-1 to Laganes. Amadou, nice head and down. Spreads it out for Gaillard. I think maybe his lack of match fitness might be playing into things a little bit today. Here, Laganes! Oh, what a strike. And it's going to be a corner to us, but we've been much the better side so far today. Created a good number of chances. But, and, oh, well, there we go. An equaliser for Villarreal. That's big. Juampi's ball in again. And it's Sua flicked away, though. That's big, though. That equaliser in the other game, it means a lot to us. Because right now, we should be in front. Uh, Amadou's been sensational. Toure's been de decent as well. Mm, maybe we should press him more as well. That seems to have definitely helped, though. Pressing and marking him out the game. I'm just content to keep going. Like, we've been great. Uh, this has been a pretty good performance so far. We've been good defensively. We've created some opportunities. We've definitely been the better of the two teams. We just haven't managed to find the back of the net with our chances. And that's so often the story. I do feel like Guy R might not be getting much more of the game, though. Because he's actually... I think his match fitness has been lacking, and that's probably a bit of an issue too. He's probably the worst performer on the pitch, and maybe not playing uh, Galan was definitely not the right choice on my part. And Hernandez! He's offside. Definitely offside. Well blocked. Amadou. Hernandez, nice touch. For Gaillard now. Bit of a breakaway. He just doesn't look on the pace, although he has got a bit of a space there, and that's not the good ball, and I think he's going to have to come off. Like, it was a bad choice putting him in the team. That being said, he's up to a 6.4 now. He was 6.3 at half time. I just want to give him another 10 minutes, maybe, and see how things go. Because maybe... Just maybe, he might be making a comeback. Luisinho, Tiago Torres. As things stand at the moment, we'd be three points clear. And Catafe would be in real trouble. Whoopi! And that is a glorious piece of play. Alex Gaillard with the assist. This is what I mean. Galan has only provided two assists all season. Now that's seven assists for Alex Gaillard this year. I think he's got a couple off the bench as well during that period where um, he wasn't playing, which is most of the last part of the season. This is one, one hell of a cross. Ball whipped across. There is Whampy. Back in good form. And we have the lead away at Girona. That is a superb moment. And that, that right there would put us back to five points clear of the drop zone with two matches to spare. We can't get complacent, but Whampy with a goal. Gaia with the assist. Pretty much exactly what we wanted from this game. We're going to leave Gaia on. I, I'm actually very glad that I persisted with Gaia. I just noticed him ticking up a tiny little bit at the start of the half. And I thought maybe the halftime team talks knock some sense into him. And maybe he's going to start to pick up the pace a little bit. Because he does seem to have found something a bit now, a bit more now. Luisinho, out for another... Yeah, I think we've been good. I'm going to be honest. I don't really know what substitutions to make right about now. We're, in, we're playing well. Ball across. Malero! And I think that was tipped over the ice. A goal kick in the end. Well, last thing stand now... Um, in fact, as things stand now, Hatafe are relegated. 
as things stand, and that would mean only one more spot available, and that would be via the lead, who are five points from us. But a lot could still change. But the key thing is that, in fact, as things stand at the moment, Leganes would go above Getafe, whatever we signed him for. Luisinho, go on, win us another corner or get a good ball in. He's found it, you know. Hernandez, oh, what a header. What a header. Every goal he scores is a header. I don't get it. I'm genuinely not not joking around now. His last, I think, five goals for us have all been headers, but he's like five foot ten and doesn't have good heading ability. And yet he can't score any one-on-ones with his stats. I, I just utterly baffled by it. And now we're 2-0 up, which is the main thing. I, I should be concentrating on that, but I'm just utterly baffled by his 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 ability to win headers. It's crazy. I love it. And now we're looking very good at going five points clear and we deserve the win. It's just very strange the way it's come about. Oh, what a header. That's an insane header from um, Insua. If Hernandez could drop this off now and now make a run in behind, this is where I want to see those kind of plays. Hernandez, he's got men surging forward with him. One of them is Joe Willock. And a good save from Bono in goal. This is looking very, very good. Uh, it's very, very good indeed. Technically, Laganas and Getafe would not be relegated today. As things stand, I don't think, because they'd still be five points from safety with six points available. But the key thing is neither of them can finish above us, Lozano. And a clean sheet today would be quite something. And there we have it. Girona nil, Wesker two, Juanpi and Juan Hernandez with the goals. I'm not often going to do this, but I think I made the right choice by at halftime not taking off Alex Gaia. I saw that he ticked up one point and I thought maybe there's a chance for him to do something here. He then comes up with the winning assist and that, that was good stuff for him. And there we are, 35 points on the board now, five points from safety, uh, sorry, from the relegation zone in a very, very good spot right about now. Uh, Leganes and Getafe cannot catch us. Via, uh, via the lead, very, very difficult to catch us. Yes, come on. So unbelievably pleased with that. I don't know if there's any more games this week. No, the next games aren't until Friday. So you'll have to wait till the next episode to see what happens. Because potentially, if Valladolid don't beat Real Betis, we will officially be safe. But in all seriousness, I want to take a little look at Hernandez. Just while we've got this opportunity. So today, scored a winning goal. It was a header. Against Betis, that was definitely a header as well, wasn't it? He got two goals against Ibar, both headers. The one again got against Valladolid. Was that a header? I don't know. <laughs> I genuinely don't know. I don't think it was. Just had a little look. So the goal he scored against Villarreal was not a header and neither was the one that he scored against Valladolid. However, his last four goals for us have all been with his head and that is such a strange scenario for a player like him. But I'm certainly not knocking it. It really is very, very odd um, considering how few headers he actually wins. That's His header stats are really piss poor. Not that you'd expect him to be good. Here is our headers one analysis. He wins 34% of his headers, and yet the last four goals he scores have been headers. Very, very strange. Absolutely love the fact that he's become this weird little enigma of a player uh, recently, and it is a huge, huge moment for us in the fact that we are very, very likely to be staying up right now. First win for a little while. First win since the 4-2 against Ibar. Really, really strong performance away from home. Exactly what we needed. And right now, we go away to Getafe, who have not registered a win in the league for 17 matches. What's the betting they'll go and beat us in this one? It won't matter because they already can't finish above us, but they could still stay up potentially. It's very unlikely. And the fact that Laganes could still stay up with two matches to go from where they were is utterly insanity. Uh, but there you go. We need one point or hope that Valladolid uh, don't win both their final two games and then we will be able to stay in the league. But I still want to finish up as high as possible. Let's go and beat Hatafe and go and beat Deportivo as well. And then we can finish on 41 points, which would be utterly mental. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this um, episode, and I really hope you have, Drop a like for the fact that we basically nearly stayed up. That'd be gorgeous. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.